same as those of the grunion. Imagine, it's in the birds, in cows, flies, plants too, even bacteria. We all share the same biological mechanisms for time. So the rhythm of our daily lives comes from within us. Our fundamental experience of time turns out to be internal, written into the DNA of every single cell of our bodies. But in the past couple of hundred years, that's all changed. The rule of nature has been replaced by the rule of machines. Industry, global travel, and electric lights have created a brave new world in which we control the length of our days. We're no longer at the whim of nature. Technology has allowed us to create our own time, but at a faster pace. It seems we all have a sense of time passing, and how much. Even in a completely empty environment, in the absence of any information, we still have this ability. It's like a sixth sense. So there's something going on inside of us, something in our mind that allows us to judge the amount of time passing. And scientists have asked the question, how do we do this? At Duke University in North Carolina, scientists have made an astonishing discovery. I'm going to take part in an experiment to reveal just how we sense time passing. It's all down to something Warren Meck calls the stopwatch. So you believe that there's a stopwatch in my brain that's sort of ticking away, right? I mean, how can that be? Well, the idea is, is that there's a brain circuit in there that's very selective for keeping track of time. Mm -hmm. And that when we put you in the scanner, we can actually see the, that circuit at work. Mm -hmm. It's going to light up in some sense? Your, your machine is going to be able to look right in and see certain centers of the brain lighting up? Well, if we can get you to focus on just the duration of the events in there, that'll put a spotlight on this stopwatch. Mm -hmm. So you're right, we're, we're going to be able to activate it and just look right into the brain. The hope is that Warren Meck and his team will be able to identify which area of the brain is active while I'm timing something. Michio, can you hear me okay? And I have you respond to those duration stimuli as to whether they're shorter or longer. Are you ready? It's incredible to think it's actually possible to detect my experience of time passing. Anita just sent it over. Let's take a look. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow, that's, that's my brain. Over here, we're looking for what parts of your brain were activated when you were trying to time the duration of those stimuli. Mm -hmm. Warren, look at this. This is by far the brightest part of the timing uh, part of the brain. What, what's happening there? Well, this is the, the front part of your brain where the critical part of the stopwatch is. It's astonishing. I'm looking at the very cells which sense time passing, seeing them in action. So this is what's beating then, right? There's a stopwatch is right there. Right. Now what's inside there that is actually beating? Is it a chemical reaction? Is it a, a nervous reaction? And what is it inside there that's clicking away? Right, well there are thousands of brain cells inside of there that beat in a regulated fashion mm -hmm. and they serve as the, essentially the tick tock of the stopwatch. So even this sense of time passing is embedded within the neurochemistry of our brains. A cluster of cells near the base of our brain releases a chemical that acts as a start signal. 
This then triggers a group of neurons at the front of the brain to fire together, but each to a different beat. And it's this pattern of beats that signals how much time has elapsed. This process is happening constantly, without us even knowing it. We're continually timing the world around us. So if Warren is right, it means that he's been able to isolate the circuits that allow us to judge the passing of time, the organ, so to speak, that allows us to measure the beat of time itself. The discovery of the stopwatch might even explain a bizarre phenomenon. In life-threatening situations, people say that time slows down. So much that they could see every tiny detail. The question is, does time really slow down? Or is it just imagined? We're going to find out. Psychologist Dr. David Eagleman is about to conduct the first ever scientific experiment to explore whether time really does slow down in a near-death situation. So in order to measure how fast people's brains are taking in information, we've built this device, which we call the perceptual chronometer. And the idea is that numbers flash very rapidly on this LED screen. They flash so rapidly that a normal brain under normal circumstances can't see what's being flashed here. But if time were running in slow motion, then you should be able to distinguish the numbers. Jesse Callas has volunteered to be our guinea pig. Can you see that there are numbers flashing on the screen here? Yes. Okay, these are flashing at a slow rate. If okay. I speed this up, at some First, point... First, David has to make sure that Jesse can't read the numbers when time is running normally for him. That it's very difficult to read what the numbers are. Yes, it very difficult. Okay, and so are you able to read what's on the screen now? Um, yes. How about now? Uh, yes. Okay, and here, can you read the number at all? No, not at all. Okay. Let's just do this number here. Yeah, great. Is that too tight? No, go ahead. Okay. There's no way to fake this test because if time is not running more slowly, they can't see the sequence. Nervous. It's a long way down. Long way down. I'm too scared. Jesse is about to free fall from a height of 33 meters, 12 stories above the ground. The question is, 